My name is Paul Kaufman. I'm a professor of ophthalmology at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health in Madison, Wisconsin. It's the only job I've ever had. I've been there for 41 years. And uh, I do travel a lot, but uh, that's, that's my home base. What's driven me is, I would say, the curiosity is to understand how do things work? You know, why does the eye do things a certain way? Uh, why does it have certain systems, some certain physiological or anatomical uh, um, st structures or pathways in the eye? And so, so how does it do it? And then why does it do it? Why? What's what's the life advantage of doing things that way? And if if you were uh, if you're a creationist, you would say, why did God m make it that way? If you're more of a secularist, you would say. Uh, why did Mother Nature that way? However you look at it, at intelligent design, it really is intelligent design, uh, by, by whichever design, whoever you think the designer was. Um, and so I try to understand how does it work, why does it work that way, and importantly, when it goes wrong, why does it go wrong, how does it go wrong, and why do you end up with the disease that you end up with when things are going wrong that way? And then, of course, comes the chess game. How do you play chess with Mother Nature in terms of, okay, this is what you are trying to do, this is what you've done, this is what went wrong, how am I going to fix it? And, I, and whether you're fixing it in biological terms, uh, with a drug, with a gene therapy, or, or with stem cells, uh, or whether you're fixing it in a mechanical sense with a device that's going into the eye, either in the course of an operation that you're moving things around, or something that you're actually going to leave behind deliberately to do a job for you and bypass the faulty pathway. I mean, that's what I do, and I do it in two general areas. One is, one is glaucoma, uh, especially the fluid dynamics, the hydrodynamics of, of glaucoma. And the other is why we lose our ability to focus up close as we get older. So you live half your life uh, with no ability or, or little ability to focus at near, and so you're wearing glasses, or you're wearing contact lenses, or you're wearing some sort of, have some sort of other device put in your eye, but you don't have the dynamic range of focus that, that we do when we're young. And so, why does that happen? What goes wrong? And, and the classic paradigm of what goes wrong, oh, the lens in your eye just gets stiff, it can't move anymore. True, but there are other things that go wrong as well, which explains why nobody's yet invented an accommodating intraocular lens that gives you more than half of what you really need. Um, and so you try to figure out what's happening with those tissues. Again, why is it happening? How do you fix it? You find out that this affects the very back of the eye as well, uh, uh, and putting unusual stress and strain on the optic nerve where it, where it leaves the eye. And this gets you into a discussion of does this have some contribution to the optic nerve disease that accompanies that really is glaucoma, is the reason why glaucoma people lose vision. Is there a biomechanical action here because the tissue is stiff and if you're an engineer you know that if the muscle is still contracting, the tissue is stiff, the uh, as opposed to elastic, there's a, a large force transmission back to the insertion point, and that may be what's happening uh, along with your presbyopia. You're putting unusual stress and strain on the optic nerve. There's much more to it than that, and we'll talk about that tomorrow night in the lecture. Uh, so, glaucoma, presbyopia accommodation are the two major foci of my, my, my career. The Jonas Friedenwald Award, which is uh, in honor of a, uh, a physician, a physiologist, and a pathologist all wrapped up, a biochemist, all wrapped up in one person uh, in the 30s and 40s and early 50s, 
uh, and he, he was sort of the epitome of the physician scientist, the clinician scientist. And he made many major discoveries f you know, for what could be done with science at that time uh, into kind of how things worked in the eye, both normal and, and pathological. And um, all physician scientists in ophthalmology look up to him, and I was fortunate in that although he was a gen generation before me, but one of his prior students, Bernard Becker, became the chair of the Department of Ophthalmology at Washington University in St. Louis, which is where I did my residency. So I came under his wing, and if you were interested in research as a resident, and, and you really were bent on a career as a, as a physician scientist, he was a terrific mentor. Some people thought he was hard to approach, but he really wasn't, especially if, if you realized you had the passion for research. And between him and Dr. Stephen Potos, who was kind of his young, young star, they really became mentors for me. And they really shaped my, uh, uh, they helped me define what I wanted to do with my life. And, and so they, they were all mentors, but the award is named after Jonas Friedenwald, so it honors somebody who has made significant contributions in research uh, to ophthalmology and ophthalmic science. So it's a great honor and I'm very flattered to get it and, and sort of especially meaningful because of the legacy in Friedenwald, Becker, Potos, me. And uh, so you feel like you're kind of part of that family which is probably elevating oneself up because you're, not, you're never gonna be at the level of those guys. But uh, but it's an honor and I'm very pleased.